So welcome again, class. Uh, we are going on to the second part of our presentations for today, May the 11th, 2020. Is this same, uh, it is still the same Professor Ayo Ahmed who gave us a very enriching presentation or lecture on hypothesis testing. Now this time we are moving on to correlation analysis. That's a very important statistic for you researchers. People are doing masters, those of you are doing PhDs uh, in the quantitative aspect of your analysis. You know, I, I like the question that uh, I like can ask. You know, you have uh, uh, quantitative, you have qualitative, and then you have mixed methods. The, uh, the suggestion these days is that you should do your best to see how you can, you know, work with mixed methods so you can it have the better of the two worlds. So at this stage, I would like to now invite uh, Professor Taslim Ayo Hamed uh, to give us a presentation on correlation analysis. Over to you, sir. What's that? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, we will have to look at people. People will be wondering why do we have to use uh, why do we have to use correlation? Yes, we use correlation because there are times we want to find out the strength and direction of a relationship between two variables. Um, and so it's, it's necessary for us to be able to look at a statistical method that uh, can be used. Some time ago, I was in this class when you mentioned that we should look, we should think about when do we, what, what do we use? What, what, what kind of statistics we use? How is it being used? Um, how do we, how do we use it? How do we interpret it? How do we be able to report it? Which is very, very important. And so sometimes a, a, a researcher will have to consider what method that what statistics is going to use. And so he may decide to be able to find out that he wants to use correlation. And it's not in all cases that we use correlation. Sometimes we use regression when there are so many, when there are so many variables. But when there are two variables that you want to consider, you use correlation to correlate one group from the other group. So the, at the end of the, this uh, interaction, we are going to define what is correlation. You mentioned the four types of correlations that we have. Differentiate between Pearson correlation and Spearman rank order. Identify the assumptions for using Pearson correlation. Interpret the formula of Pearson correlations on exercises. And utilize the Spearman rank order formula for exercise. Um, yeah. Um, what is correlation? Just like I mentioned, is a degree of association between two variables. Uh, for instance, we want to find out whether those who have who are, who are licensed, who have licensed, drive very well, and whether the experience of the driver and determines whether he's going to drive safely. Defensive driving. That's we want to find out. Is it, we can say the correlation is a measure of the strength of association among and between variables. That's why I put a driver over there. So many things can be used to be able to determine whether what you want to find out, what you want to get. Um, Francis mentioned that correlation is a technique used to measure the strength and direction of relationship between two variables. And Abbott says correlation is a way of understanding the association between two variables. And what we are saying in Nessie, when we talk of association, what are we looking at? We are looking at the relatedness or the extent to which two events vary with one another. That's important. When we say association, okay, we are looking at relatedness, okay? So why do we now use correlation? We use correlation to show how much two variables go together or go vary. And the variables have the ratio level of the measurement. Um, I've mentioned this, but I just want to retreat it. 
correlation is the measure of strengths of association among and between variables. Then we have correlation coefficient. It expresses the strength because it's, it's R squared. It expresses the strength of association between between variables. And you can look at correlation between male, male, male uh, women and pregnancy. How do uh, the relationship? Some have challenges, some don't have challenges. Some have uh, hypertension immediately after, some don't have. What are those things that is associated with women and pregnancy? You can look at it and find out. I know of uh, somebody who came who for counseling said, because I had uh, hypertension the last time and uh, I've not been able to get, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to be pregnant, I don't want to get pregnant again. We have to use um, systematic sensitization to be able to get that person off it, to tell the person that it's not. We also use, for instance, the correlation, the measure of, we look at those who do, who do exercises and the calories they burn. And but we want to find out what's the difference, what was the, the association between running, doing exercises, and calories being born. Um, just like I mentioned, the correlation coefficient um, expresses the strength of the, between the, sorry, it expresses the strength of association between variables. Uh, uh, regression is when this R square, I'm sorry for that uh, slight slip of tongue, when you want to find out the, how the value for one variable, giving a value for another variable, predict the value for one variable, giving the value for another variable. That's when we use regression. And we use multiple regression. Um, they have done it in ANOVA, and I was in the class when they talked about when they taught us uh, regression. Um, selection of correlation or regression. To select whether to use correlation or, or regression likely depends on the type of data we want to use or the factor and the outcome we want to get. For example, for instance, if we want to have test and hypothesis or the number of hours that the student studies for a final examination is possibly related to the score they receive on the exam, you know, number of hours and the time they use. So we can, we can, we can give a question to say, is number of hours studying for exam Related to score on tests, that's that's measured the linear relationship between two inter and interval and the ratio level. Okay, there are four types of relationship, and this will be explained as we move on. Positive relationship, you can see the number one day positive moves the same direction, negative move to the left direction, curvilinear, you can see shrouded. And no relationship is scattered. So in in uh, in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, when we do research, we do normally find this kind of a thing. I want to say, what is what do we have? With possible correlation, when the value of one variable increases with respect to another, and you can see the difference between the what sometimes you have that kind of a thing that happens. Negative correlation. When the value of one variable decreases with respect to another. <clears throat> sorry to interrupt you, sir. And, uh, uh, so, uh, so, sorry to interrupt you, uh, Professor Ahmed. Yes, sir. Uh, there is, no, no, no. Please, Carter, I, I, just, I just want to... Uh, Mike is there. Mike, Michael Mike. That when poverty increases, honesty decreases. <laughs> that is yes, what kind of relationship. God bless you, sir. That's what I'm... <laughs> that's God bless you, sir. God bless you. Please, God, God, yeah, okay. <laughs> God bless you. Yes, you can say mm -hmm. I wanted to because of the time there are so many things. That, so we have a type of relationship between two variables where as one variable increases, so does the other variable, but only up to a certain point. After which the variable continues to increase or decrease. Uh, no correlation where there is no linear dependence or no relation between two variables. Um, sometimes we have this information that people must be able to take note when they want to use a correlation. The value ranges from minus point, minus one, zero, to plus one, zero, because that's the, that's the way. And you must be able to know what is exactly you want to use 
uh, where is your where is the result that you are having? Where does it go? Is it close? Is it to the left or to the right? Then that will give you the decision that you are going to take. It describes the strength of association between variable. It describes the directions of association between variable, whether it is positive or negative. One must note that fact. That one is that one is some is something you can miss. You must be able to put it at the mind. Value ranges from this to this, and this describe the strength of association and direction of association between variable positive or negative. Then you know this what we have heard about uh, that uh, Pearson is named after somebody, and uh, just like I mentioned, minus range ranges from. Uh, it can be used only for data that are measured at internal and original level. Please know that Pearson can be used for to, uh, to data measured at internal or original level. Okay, Road linear. Uh -huh. This can also measure linear relationship alone. It cannot measure covilinear relationship. And uh, we have this information that we have. Pearson now is correlation. It gives you positive or negative coefficient of determination is. When, uh, when you this is what I talk about a regression, it tells you what percentage of the independent variable and explain what happens to the other variable. The closer the R square to 1.0, the better X and Y explain. Um, this we can we can note we can note this one as I mentioned. When what are the assumption? The primary assumption is randomly choosing sample, not that you just pick one piece. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there are ways by which you can use, you can pick a random sample. There are methods of two. And there must, the variable must be at interval level. The variables must be independent of one another. The variables are normally distributed, and variance are equal. Linearity of the variable is important. Why do, how do we interpret? Yes. When direction, we look at direction, when the variable changes, they are value in the same direction, the R is a positive correlation. When the variable changes in opposite direction, the R value is negative. It should be noted that positive and negative do not mean good or bad. Yeah. Negative correlation are yeah. also known as inverse correlation. Um, yes, we have mentioned this, that rule is sometimes written in minus one to one, Row is zero, and it means no association. If it is minus one, it means perfect negative association. If it is plus, it means perfect positive association. If row is less than one, it's less than 0 0.5. Show that the relationship is a weak relationship. Remember when we were talking about um, about alpha level, and we are talking of t tails, and we are saying two t tails and two tail tails. And I say that uh, when it is at uh, 0 0.5, it is higher. And then uh, when it is at 0. Point, uh, when it is up, when you, when you have the direction of R. So if it is above 0 0.5, but less than 1, it provides strong positive relationship. However, if it is time is negative, it means negative, negative correlation. We have the formula as this. Which we want people we want to use our hand. In this in this context, I use a manual to be able to explain so that people can be able to understand. For example, I just like I mentioned earlier on, that the number of hours that the student studies for a final examination is positively related to the scores they will receive in the exam. The number of hours for studying is is, is regarded as X. The exam score is is, is Y. And the number of uh, students, they are in each, for each, you know, they are equal to each other, seven. So, and if you add, if you add together, and you will find out that uh, uh, you are going to have X mean, is going to mean for the number of hours, is going to be four, all up together. You will find out the mean, manual mean, I mean, but of uh, exam score, it's going to give you it's going to give 60. Then we want to use, it could be hypothesized that the number of hours that the student studies for a final examination is possibly related to the score they will receive on the exam. 
That's uh, that's what we will have in mind. Then we will look, just post this information into use the formula. If you look at the x y x, okay x y, then we find the mean. Well, from the mean, that is to we are subtracting the four from. We are subtracting this. What we have the mean from x, subtracting what we have from uh, mean from y. And you will, it will give you x y to give you y x x s x s bar give you y y minus bar. Um, I so, so I hope I hope I hope my people are following what I'm saying. Oh yes. I'm saying I'm saying okay. No, I don't need to go. <laughs> I don't need, because it's very simple. Oh yes. Uh, yes. When you look at the formula, we use we take it. We, look, we use the formula. If you look at summation, x minus y by x minus x minus x bar of, and summation that we have a y minus y bar of over. We will take it to the first the first column after the y. Take it to the next column after the x x bar, and that's what that's what we are going to do. We are going to we are going to remove we are going to remove the mean from. Um, uh, two and it's going to give us minus two, so that is what I've done to to, to this level. Then after you are going to square it, you know, so square whatever you have there. You minus 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 two multiplied by two, you give us four. Minus two multiplied by two is going to give you four as well. Twenty-eight man, twenty-eight times twenty is going to give you seven eighty-four, and it's, it's going to cancel the the, the minus. So we are going to put that down. We have 142 as x x x minus x bar y minus x y bar. That is up that we have up. We have um, that's 142. We have x minus x bar square square. That's going to give us 28. We are going to have y minus x y minus y bar square. That's going to be 1864. So. That's what we are going to substitute. 142 of 28 in this column, the next column, uh, 164 in the next column. And then we now use our calculator to be able to calculate. That can be graphically shown as, as I stated over here. 142, 28, 1864. Then from this, we are going to get 142 all over 28, 228. Uh, Four six, then R will give us sixty two, and since R give up on sixty two, just like I mentioned the earlier one, this must be on our head as we are calculating and see whether it is closer to plus one or is closer to minus one, and as this this one is it shows us that it's positive because it's stronger, it's point six two. What do we do? We have 0.62, the square root of it is 0.338. Then we now look at, um, calculate the difference. Yes, somebody say, why do we do, why do we lose degree of freedom? We are not, we are not God, we can't test God. Whatever we do, we subject it to just an assumption. And that's why we say we have two group, N minus two. The first group is seven, the second group is seven, we have 14. Minus two give us 12. Then we are using an alpha level of 0 0.01 because it, it's one tail test. And we find the critical. And if you look at the table, the, if you look at the table, you have 0 0.457. And then it says that we should reject the null hypothesis. So, okay, we reject the null hypothesis. That is that for that uh, uh, information. Um, interpretation. There are two primary dimensions of um, correlation that are helpful. Uh, what I mentioned earlier was the strengths and direction. And I've mentioned, okay, I, I will, we can go back, we can look at this at our, at, our, at our leisure time. When we say something is positive, what, are, what do we mean? When we say it's positive, there is very little relationship maybe uh, between the number of babies being born Okay, by one reason or the other. So this one is strong. Uh, you want to find out whether the relationship between the drug that people are taking and the baby. Well, if you 
is you want to find out there is relationship between family income and student achievement. Yes, can say this is very strong family relation, strong family between family income, student and student achievement. That's the family family tie and the like. So many so many research have been carrying our social economy status of family and the student academic achievement. Okay, we can look also at uh, negative uh, negative. Uh, um, what we call negative correlation, noise and human learning. When the place area, an area is noisy, can learning can learning take place properly there? No. But if anybody says that I want when I read, I listen, to, I want uh, there must be music. Music must be all over me. That person does not know what he's doing. So learning cannot take place when there is human learning cannot. So we have weak inverse relationship between noise and human learning. So just like I mentioned that it is not a matter of good or bad, but what we want to check. For example, caffeine consumed and success are telling a, 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 a showing, showing truth. My professor, Professor C.J. Makari of Blessed Memory, carried out a survey on training the need to, to be able to check the anxiety level of an individual. And they said that the people that take, that inject caffeine, that inject uh, an escape and, and the like, or take a lot of uh, Anything that has caffeinated, there's a strong inverse correlation between ingest of caffeine and dexterity at work. So that shows to us that it is very, very, it is very strong, but it's negative. Because we now have this one, you will look at this as you go ahead to know this is no correlation. This is positive correlation between uh, urine, uh, urea and urine, uh, vitamin. Uh, vitamin and uh, garbage. You can see this is negative example, just example. So let me go to Spearman rules. Spearman correlation is non parametric, and the more robust, it's more robust, underline, more robust than Pearson form because a lot of problematic data can be used so, because we rank other and we can get a lot of information. Please note that it works on ordinal and interval, internal, interval, interval data. Okay. Uh, then, though the results also vary between minus one and plus one as Pearson, you can obtain a negative value which is interpreted as with Pearson. Since it's not parametric statistics, you cannot square the R value to arrive at the variance as explained in that one. But several factors affect the size of correlation. And its power. That is the ability to reject the null accuracy when it should not be. When it should not be. That is number one. Correlation and sample size. Correlation is not position. The strength, the power of correlation is related to variability of the study. And outliers can affect the calculated R. Uh, violation of equal variance. And uh, when the parts of scattered the diagram show nonlinear, when it's not affected to be, something is wrong. We use this formula to be able to calculate. And uh, Swamaran correlation is you not know, parametric, which I have mentioned, and the value is just like I've explained. Then I give you an example of the score of nine students in physics and math as follows. And what do you want to find out? We want to convert the students' mark in two subjects and put and use Scamaro. For what? Why do you want to use it? We want to find the ranks for each individual. To find, to know whether, yes, they are doing, they are, they are, they are correlated with each other. Whether students who score more do well in mathematics can also do well in physics. And we have the scores of first group, second group, and then we subject it into ranking. And uh, the scores in Toran, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, the, the last. The top column, the D, that's what you have in the top column. The ranking of each one of them. Then we have the D square. This is the D, D square. And then we can sum all, we can add them all together. Then we need the formula to be able to get the information about what, uh, what are you going to get. And uh, since the, we have inserted the values and we have been able to get the value as this, we can use this to be able to calculate. And the Spearman rank correlation for this set is 0 0.9. What do you remember? What does, what does that mean? It means 
is the value is 0 0.9, which means there is a significant positive relationship between student performance in mathematics and in physics. The implication of this is that as student performance in mathematics improves, it has positive influence on their performance in and in physics. Um, in conclusion, just like I mentioned earlier, uh, correlation is measures the strength and direction of the relationship or association between two variables. And this could be like achieved either by using square man correlation and uh, or, square, or Pearson. And there are four types just I've listed positive, negative, covalent, and no correlation. I thank you for your attention, sir and ma'am. Thank you so very much, sir. This is another very uh, stimulating lecture, and uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, indeed, at the background, I was uh, uh, taking steps to I was taking steps to drink some tea because uh, when you talk about caffeine, not <laughs> that Professor Bakker is James Bakker is uh, study on caffeine. I just thought I should try the thing out myself, you know. So that that's what I've been doing to try whether uh, I'm going to be nervous, nervous in class. Uh, but good enough, I was not nervous it's in class. Excess of, it's and I, excess of pizza. Yeah, I put it's excess. Excessive. I put I put one whole thing, one whole thing of. Uh, of caffeine in here, you know, so it's excess. I, I took excess. <laughs> by the way, that's by way of a joke. Thank you so very much, sir. This is uh, excellent. And uh, we have time for a couple of questions. I'd like to assure everybody that the slides, you know, uh, apparently the network from Professor Ahmed's hand end uh, is not so steady. So some of the slides came out fuzzy. But I, I saw the days, and I think uh, one of the say he cannot read very well. Read the slides. Uh, most of the slides are not readable. That's the day. And uh, I saw that Nuruddin Adejimi said that the, uh, when you get this, when you get the PowerPoint files, you will see that everything is super, super clear. So you relax. Uh, later today, be because I'll go into my studio to produce this, and uh, you will see that uh, you will get the best, you know, from from the video and also from the PowerPoint file that you will be receiving. Yes, so floor is open. Floor is open. Uh, let us know who wants to take it. Uh, the, the, the only thing that uh, I would like to uh, share by way of a joke, not but seriously though, with with uh, Professor Ahmed, which Professor Aribabu and I and uh, uh, Professor Sony we, we have been discussing, is that all of these statistical tools, all of them, no exception. Spearman, not an African. Pearson, yeah. not an African. And I've taken yeah. the delight in probing, in looking at their histories. And I found that, I mean, these people don't have two heads. When are we, when are we going to be able to have some notable African, like Ahmed, like Ariba, what we have been told, listen carefully, we have been told that by 2025, that's in five years' time, there will be an Ariba scale. That will be used the world over. In fact, when they are going to Mars, when uh, when the world, when astronauts are going to Mars, they are going to be using the Arigba Bull scale. So, congratulations yeah. in advance. But I tell you something. It is very, very tough, very, very tough to get the people in the West to accept anything that is coming from Africa. The reason being that they, they, they think we cannot do something that is acceptable. You see, that's why I said the CTC approach that we have, uh, we, have, uh, we have developed, we are testing it all over the world. And if they don't have respectability in the community where that approach is being used, like in our case now, the education community, they, they are not going to take you seriously. So, uh, I, I, like I said, it's by way of a joke, but also by way of uh, a challenge. To all our statisticians, you know, let us also try. There's no statistic that we'll be looking at now. It will not be, you know, from somebody who had been, uh, who, who is from, who is, who, yes, exactly, who, who is from the West. But you see, as I said, the heights that great men reached were not attained by sudden flight. 
when others slept, they toiled away in the night. So it's not a question of somebody sitting down, cooking up, I mean, getting one formula and all that. Nobody's going to accept that. So it must take years and years of hard work and pushing it to the front line of the international community in statistics for them to debate it, for them to see how, it is, how, how the thing is. So the CTC approach, for instance, is de debated and it's right there in the forefront of the science education community. So nobody's going to push it aside. So I thought I should just reflect on that with you uh, and expect that uh, a combination of uh, Ahmed, no, no uh, we say uh, Professor Arik Babu, the Arik Babu, Ahmed, Sonny uh, formula. We're expecting it by 2025. So the two of you get together. Go we'll and talk to Ted Fund uh, ES to give you some money to do yes, quite sir. a lot of research in it. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. So, who are we having as uh, to make a co co contribution now? Or make a comment? Or ask a question? Yeah. Um, yes, the desk, yes. Uh, I've just listed you. Don't, don't ask the question yet. Don't ask your question yet. I'm just listing those who are going to interview. Okay. No, not yet, the desk. Not yet. Not, not yet. I'll call you. I'll call you in a minute. Yes, uh, Fred Hour. I'm not calling you, I've just recognized you. I'll call you as well. So, yes, who else is raising his hand? No. So, okay. I will, uh, okay, I'll add you, okay. I'm muting everybody now because of the noise. I'm muting everybody. So, I will expect that uh, when you are called, you will mute your microphone. I'm going the reverse order. So I take uh, Aladio. Okay. Just unmute your microphone. Aladio. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. And I want to say big congratulations to our daddy for a wonderful presentation this morning. Sir, looking at the topic correlation, which is talking about the degree of association between the variables. Um, in, in, in some cases, I've seen a situation where someone will use a chi square. Is there any relationship? I mean, why, why you are you using chi square to, to make a decision on variables? Is, is that possible? Um, I, I like okay. Is there a phone in your? Is that a phone? Is that a phone in your in, uh, in your environment? Is that a phone? It's making some noise. Yes, yes sir. Uh, okay. okay, fine. Look, I don't want to throw that question to our distinguished uh, presenter. I want you yourself, you're yeah, a doctoral student, by the way. I, I mean, I want you yourself to answer that question. How can you be comparing chi square with correlation and R? So you answer the, answer the question yourself before I take on uh, Fred. Yes, I like your king. Yes, you yes, answer the question yourself. I'm, I'm, at, uh, I'm at the crossroad, that's what I'm asking. Which crossroad? Are you, is it uh, Allen Avenue crossroad? Which kind of crossroad is that one? <laughs> My friend, don't talk about crossroad with regard to this. I mean, look, there are some things we have to assume. You have a first degree. You have a second yes, degree, a master's. And this is a PhD. Yes, look, I tell you, all my undergraduate students, all, I taught them all these things, undergraduate, at the 300 level. I taught them all of these things I've been teaching, except the advanced statistics of, say, analysis of covariance, multivariate analysis of variance, and the, and the like. So you can't come here now, and uh, although I didn't teach you in undergraduate classes, but you know, you can't come here now and be talking about uh, chi square and, uh, and R. I mean, they are uh, two different things. Anyway, I leave it to the uh, professor to answer. So let's take on Fred. Sir Fred, take the floor. Thank you very much, sir. I, I just want to. Uh, in my mind, it looks to me correlation plays the same role, can be used uh, like linear regression. Is that the case? That's the, it, it, that's what my, my mind tells me. Okay. So I just wanted clarity from the professor. Oh, yeah, that, that's good. I, I know that, uh, Fred, you asked that question because uh, our daddy, Professor Aribabu, taught us multiple regression. Are you, and, and I'm sure you saw that regression line. I saw all those uh, points there. So that's why I'm thinking. Am I correct, by the way, uh, Sir Fred? You are right. But my understanding of linear regression is that it's just two variables. And here, correlation also, I see that it's two variables. 
Okay. Unlike uh, multiple regressions where you have more than uh, two variables, okay. uh, so that's that 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 that's what's making me. Ask All right, uh, the, the the professor will answer. Do you know there's also multiple correlation? You know there's a simple regression, like you have a simple correlation, also multiple. This is a very interesting, okay. by the way, very interesting. Now you got to wait for okay. the Arik Babu Ahmed uh, Sony formula. That, 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 that they will tell you all of these things yeah, by 2025. Yes, uh, who else? The days. The days. The days, you have the floor. Uh, uh, we talked about one tail test and two tail tests. Yeah. What is the difference between the two, and when do we use one and not the other? Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful question. The days is because one has <laughs> the tail of the other one, they have two tails, like a dog, two tails. The other one, okay, like a dog has one tail. <laughs> and the other one, like a mutated dog, has two tails. So that, that's it. <laughs> but that's joking now. We're going to more seriously now go to a professor who will, just a minute now, a professor who will uh, address the questions. Yeah, so over to you, sir. Professor Ahmed. You're muted. You're already muted. Please carry on. Can you hear me, sir? Loud and clear. Loud and very clear. Loud and very clear. Very good. I said I want to start from the last question. Um, the difference between one tail test and two tail test. Uh, a one tail test, okay? is the one that is trying to be able to use the 5% of the alpha. You remember when we are talking of 1 minus C, okay, we are referring to the confidence level. And the confidence level is what we are using to be able to determine the degree of uh, the, level, the, degree, the level of significance of our work. So if you have uh, the test that you are using, and you say you're using it at 95 percent, okay? It shows that uh, you are the you are you are you are using the five percent of the alpha, and that will tell you that that is the direction at which you are going, the direction at which the question that we have, for example, all Nigerians have percent increased chance of of having pandemic of having um, COVID-19. That's that's the direction. All Nigerians have a 5% increase of having pandem uh, COVID pandemic. That is, that is what you have just been able to, it's a direction. You do not say uh, whether there is likelihood or there is uh, it's going to be less than this or that. So a two-tail test splits the half, half level into the half, one to the right and the other to the left. You are saying it could be greater or lesser than or equal to. So you are giving, it's a two way thing that you have given to us to say whether it can be this or that. So that is what we use. We use a two test test to split the alpha into, the, into two. Now, to go to the second question on linear regression, when you are talking of regression the other time, you, you wanted, you have a variable and uh, I uh, carried out a study some years back on um, on um, the violence, students, students' involvement in violent activity. Why are students in school? Why are they? Why, why do they normally? Anytime there is a luta, why do they run out to say to be part of it? And you will find that there is not just only one factor that precipitates the child. To, be, to have a violent behavior. There are so many, there are so many factors. And then when you list all those factors, you now want to see which one of them has the higher, is one is higher. It is one that you are going to want to want to immediately want to look at for no social support. If they doesn't, they don't, they have financial difficulty, students are out there, they are bullying. Students have the, the, the family, family ties, uh, they have challenges. So many factors you have to have listed. But at the end of the day, when you carry out that study, linear, you, you must be able to point at a factor or one or two factors that this one, two, three, that we are going to.
able to work on to be able to change the behavior of the people, of the students in the environment. That's where we used linear regression. And there are so many, <laughs> there are so many factors, there are so many things that we use to be able to determine that. Now, the one person who is asking about um, uh, chi square, uh, there are so many. If you check, if you check records. There are so many reasons where you will use uh, uh, chi square uh, because you have an observe. You have something that you are trying to look at, and you want to find out between the two. It's also the sort of variance, sort of variation in it, but. You must be able to use a, 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 you are able to come up with, with factor that this does not come due to chance. You want to be specific because the measure you want to look at, how well does still relate with the distribution that you are using. Uh, there are so many examples that you can you can you can think of. But I've mentioned if I want to look at the students that are failing in exam. And those that have, who are from poor, are from uh, uh, low, uh, low socioeconomic status. If that is what I'm going to do, I must narrow down which of the factors that I want to use to be able to get the information. And the questionnaire, the instrument you want to use, that instrument must be able to relate effectively to that particular factor so that you are not going to make a mistake. In your finding. One minute so, more, sir. Uh, One minute more. One minute more. Yes, I've, I've, I've been able to explain myself to okay. on, on that. They can read more on it because okay. it is also one of the is one of one of the ways of uh, doing association or relationship. Sure. But it is deeper than correlation and um, uh, PSP Amaro and the like. Thank you Thank very you, much, sir. sir. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much. Uh, our dear Professor Ayo Hamed. Uh, we're very grateful to you. You have uh, given us a position that uh, has deepened our knowledge and understanding about hypothesis testing and about correlation. Uh, as we close, I'm going to ask two people to make uh, some quick statements, and that will be Professor Oche Nanzewi and uh, actually three people. Professor Oche Nanzewi to make a few statements, Dr. Yemisi Akinriade. Uh, a few statements, and then Professor Juma Shabani to give us, you know, is a mathematical physicist. Uh, he's coming up with uh, the theory of X, uh, something, some theory very soon. <laughs> Juma Shabani, you're going to give us some closing, some closing uh, comment. So, Professor Chenzewi, you have the floor, man. Thank you, sir. I want to thank Professor Hamid for this insightful lecture, especially telling us the conditions for using some of these tests, because anybody can send it uh, these days when there are commercial um, yeah. data analysts. Yeah. They can just do anything for you, and if you don't understand yeah. the underlying principles, yeah. you will miss it. And when you write your report and you can't defend it, yeah. it's terrible. So I'm happy about what you just learned this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Yemisi yeah, Akinri, you, you, you can mute yourself, man. You, 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 you are muted. Yes, yes I, I don't um, see. Thank you very much, uh, professors, facilitators, and everyone. Uh, we can see you. Uh, can you put on your video, ma'am? We can see sorry? you. Oh, we can see you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. No problem. Is it, it seems to be very pathetic. Okay. It's not staying up. Yeah, that's okay. fine. That's fine. Now, um, yes, like I was saying, um, I enjoyed the course, the two um, uh, facilitation. It was quite a refresher for me. Okay. Like I was saying, as much as, you know, f for me, I was just thinking, yes, it's very precise in terms of uh, the quantitative end of it. There was a gentleman who asked about qualitative application. I'm even taken further in respect of how we make decisions in our lives, okay? And at what point do we 
do we interface between the quantitative end and the application in our real lives in terms of when we're doing research, when we are quantifying new things that we haven't precisely measured in terms of the null hypothesis, because we need to have been able to define that properly before we can even begin to, um, to decide whether we are accepting or we are going to reject. I don't know, am I being, being clear at all? Yeah, that, that, that's, fine. that's fine. Thank you so very much, ma'am. Thank you so very much. Yes. So we will be uh, reflecting on that in the next lesson, especially uh, when Professor Michael Over is uh, concluding his bit on the analysis ah, okay. of moment structures, which has uh, this matter of uh, uh, the, prat uh, the, the practical application. Yeah, exactly. So can we have Professor Juma Shabani wrap this all up uh, for us? Thank you very much. Uh, I think on behalf of the participants, I should like to thank most sincerely Professor Hamid. These lectures were very useful, very relevant. We could see some of the students already throwing questions, concrete questions. How shall we apply, uh, apply this? Uh, these two tails, three tails, and so on. <laughs> but uh, I'm, very, I'm very happy because uh, I can see that uh, they are really ready to use this. And, uh, and to move forward with their research. And uh, also at this stage, I'd like to thank Professor Kebukola for uh, selecting such relevant, uh, I mean, topics for this, uh, this uh, courses. And we are really enjoying it. And uh, we hope that, uh, you know, we will uh, enjoy it throughout to the conclusion of the course. So thank you very much. And uh, looking forward for the other lectures tomorrow and the day after. Yes. Thank you so very much. And uh, as we are aware, uh, Professor Juma Shabani will be, please, make sure uh, uh, on Tuesday yes. evening, no. please do not do not eat anything, even if you are fasting, don't eat anything. <laughs> because it's going to give us very rich menu, very rich menu on Wednesday. On Wednesday, we are having Professor Juma Shabani tell us uh, about the developments in STEM education in Burundi, that very great country. You need to go to Burundi. Very lovely, hilly, good scenery. And uh, but don't worry. As soon as we finish uh, this course in July, I have uh, put a phone call through uh, to British Airways. Uh, we are going to, we're, we're going, <laughs> Michael is happy now. We are going to move to Bujumbura. And we're going to enjoy it in Bujumbura. So we're going to, yeah. We are going to see now. By the way, at this lecture, we saw one tail test. We saw two tail test. When we go to Burundi, you are going to see three tails <laughs> or five tails. We are going to do, see all of that there. And uh, also on Wednesday, you know, we have uh, Professor S. P. T. Bamanja. Bamanja, we introduce him. Uh, we introduce him. He is looking at Sierra Leone. If you go to Freetown, by the way, if you want anything free, go to Freetown. Yeah, Everything is free in Freetown. <laughs> Aladdin Okin is preparing to go now because he wants free things. <laughs> so you go to free town, everything is free. Himself and uh, Fred want to go to free town. <laughs> uh, so he is uh, a great figure in the education space in in, uh, in Syria alone. Uh, if you talk about education in uh, Syria alone, just talk about Professor uh, Bamanja, SPT. And as I mentioned during one of our classes uh, for a big college w one of the oldest in west africa it was like the principal the vice chancellor it was like the vice chancellor of that university so we have a very interesting week ahead of us and uh, again uh, i'd like to support professor juma shabani in on behalf of all of us thanking yeah, professor Ahmed for a great uh, presentation at our vice chancellor professor uh, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Ibadan for joyfully participating with us in this lesson. So I'm going to unmute you all and then let's give a round of applause to everybody. All right. So thank you all and uh, see you tomorrow. Bye bye now. <laughs>